I love to try new papers and surfaces for my watercolor paintings, so when I discovered this watercolor journal by Etcher on Amazon that is advertised as a customizable hardcover sketchbook that has 100% cotton paper pages, I just had to buy it. I was especially intrigued by the image of a drawing on the fabric cover. I recently posted a video about painting on a canvas fabric bag, so I thought, why not try watercolor on the cover of this journal too? The journal comes in both hot or cold pressed paper in three different European sizes, A4, A5, and A6. I ordered the A5, which is slightly larger than five by seven inches with hot pressed paper. You can also order all three sizes as a set. The journal arrived in this cute little box. You can see the Etcher logo with an image of a little origami llama. The journal itself was nicely packaged in shrink wrap with that same llama image embossed on the front cover. It's sturdy and feels high quality with an elastic band for keeping the book together. The pages are nice and thick. The first thing I needed to do before decorating the cover was to prep the surface for watercolor painting. To do this, I used my transparent Daniel Smith watercolor ground. You could also use titanium white watercolor ground, but the transparent ground works well if your surface is already white. I used an old flat brush to smoothly paint on the ground. I let that dry, then added two more coats. It's recommended that you wait about 48 hours to let the watercolor ground fully dry and cure before painting it with watercolors. Now, since I use watercolor journals to travel with and paint from life, I wanted the cover to match that theme and I decided I should paint something on the cover from life too. I have these beautiful pink carnations from a bouquet of flowers my husband got me, so I took a few of those and laid them flat on my desk to work from. I left the elastic wrapped around the book because compositionally I wanted my painting to fit inside of that space when wrapped and closed. To sketch the flowers on my journal, I used a Caran d'Ache Supercolor Soft Pink Watercolor Pencil, doing a rough drawing to nail down the placement of the flowers, sizing, and composition. I used a red pencil to sketch the darker areas within the flowers and a green pencil to draw the stems. Once I was happy with my sketch, I grabbed my Lebenzin Itty Bitty Orange Synthetic Brush and used some watered down Holbein Alizarin Crimson to start painting the pink flower petals. This surface definitely felt different than painting on paper, a little less absorbent, but still capable of handling the water and paint and diffusing in a lovely way. I used a very controlled style, painting wet and dry, using careful and specific brush strokes. I introduced a hint of ultramarine blue into the pink petals to start to add shadows and color variety. For a slightly warmer pink in certain areas of the flowers, I used a combination of both the Alizarin Crimson and Holbein Scarlet Lake, going darker and more pigmented in the center of each flower and wherever I saw rich red shadows in the flowers. Sometimes you can go into a painting like this with the expectation that it will look exactly like the real thing, but I find the process is a lot more fun, freeing, and engaging when you just do your best to paint what you see, but also allow yourself to be surprised by what the watercolor decides to do. Even when you try to control every brushstroke, watercolor has a mind of its own. The combination of ultramarine and alizarin crimson creates a beautiful purple shadow tone. The flowers were picking up some cool tones from reflected light bouncing all around them, and I really enjoyed this addition of blue and purple mixed in with the red and pink. I spent the most time on this open flower in the center and allowed my brush strokes to loosen up a little on the surrounding blossoms using a little more water and being less specific. Adding the shadow underneath the flowers really helped them start to pop off the canvas. For the stems, I painted them quickly using Terra Verde, Lemon Yellow, and Hooker's Green. I love how sometimes a textured surface like this really encourages me to use a more painterly style, let go of a super tight realistic style, and just enjoy the whimsical look of the watercolor paint. I use indigo and burnt umber to darken the shadows beneath the flowers. The addition of these dark little details really helps unify the whole thing and bring it to a level of completion. Some of the flowers and shadows require an additional layer to darken them. It's best to do this once the first layer is dry. Lastly, I add a few strong, colorful brush strokes, playing with shape and design. Remember that as an artist, you don't have to just paint what you see. You can modify, you can remove, you can add anything you want, make it your own. In fact, after I shut off the camera, I decided to add a few more green brush strokes, and I liked that much better. To prevent the watercolor from smearing or reactivating, it must be sealed. So I used my clear acrylic top coat to paint a glossy layer over the top. This dries pretty quickly and seals the whole thing. I was really happy with how my custom cover turned out. Now I need to paint something on the back. And of course, fill the pages with paintings from life. One step at a time, right? 
If you guys decide to try one of these beautiful little watercolor journals, tag me on Instagram at eolsonart and I'd love to see your designs. Check out these other videos about painting with watercolors from life and I'll see you there.